Hey all of you, hope you guys are great. So in this video, we're going to talk about the URL structure of our API. Because the API we are about to build is going to be huge and it will contain a lot of information. So we should always have to follow the right structure so we don't have any problem in when it's come to scaling the API or when we want to add any extra functionality in our API, okay? So that's what we're going to talk about in this, that how we can construct a proper URL for our API. So before we talk about the URL structure, we have to understand that what kind of data we're going to provide actually in our API. First one is NFT resource. Second one is going to be the user resource. Third one is going to be the review resource. And the fourth one is going to be the best resource. So these are the four resources we're going to provide in our API. So to give you a better idea that how we're going to construct the URL and what you should do and what you should not do when you want to build the URL for your API and what I want to prove by making this dedicated video. So let me show you what I mean by that. So this is our main domain on which our API is hosted. And this is the subdomain. We have this endpoint add new NFT. And you can say that this is a valid endpoint. Anybody can call at this endpoint and they can update and create new NFT. Same goes for the other NFT, get NFT, update NFT, delete NFT, delete NFT by user and get NFT by user. But here I have said bad, why should not follow this structure for your endpoints in your API? Because all these resources you can see, add new NFT, get new NFT, update, delete. That's all coming from here, from this NFT single resource. So why you should build different endpoints when the resource is coming from the same place? There is no problem taking this approach to create the endpoint for your API. But when it's come to scaling the, your API, this is not the way you have to do. Okay, so just imagine right now we have five resources in this NFTs. But what if we want to add multiple 10 more or 20 more or 100 more on that scenario it's become unmanageable. Okay, so we're going to follow the proper structure and that same goes for the user as well. Same goes for the reviews and the last one is the best. But here the endpoint I have constructed, these all data is coming from the same NFT resources. But we have different functionality in each of this data. We need to find out the top NFTs, most like NFT high price, 10. So that's endpoint is okay because here you are specifying that what you want. Okay, so in in case of this alias router we call it alias okay in this case of alias router you can create the endpoint like this so now the question is what should be the idle structure for constructing the url for the api so here we have the solution so this is our endpoint the primary endpoint and here this is how we're going to construct our api so you can see we have one resource for nft okay so this is the domain and this is the resource where we have all the data about the nfts all the data so if anybody wants to get nfts all the nfts they can easily call this resource if they want to create nft we're going to allow them to create the nft on the same resource but if someone wants to update nft so in such scenario we're going to take the id from them and we're going to look for the data into the nft folder and we allow them to update so you can see in this way we don't need to create multiple you are multiple endpoints that's all happening in the same endpoint all we have to do is to change the id same goes for delete same goes for update same goes for the getting the single nft okay so all the resource is located in this particular endpoint and from there we're going to pass the id and get individually all the data and that's the approach we're going to follow in this api because one resource will have one url and we have to manipulate on the base of the id and same goes for the user okay same goes for the user all information about the user is stored in one endpoint and we have to pass the id to get it same goes for the review so that's the approach we're going to follow for constructing the url of our api all the informations if you have still any confusion do leave in your comment you have to understand this that why we have planned to structure our api's endpoint our resources in such a way okay so when you want to scale it up you can add one more research for example if you want to add a product so you, all you have to do is to create a resource with the name of product and there you will have all the resource about the product and you can easily able to call the information on the base of id or on the base of the name okay it's totally up to you so hope you have understood everything that how we're going to construct and that's what we're going to do in the next video you will find that this is what the structure we're going to follow and we'll do it practically so that's the end of this video see you in the next video have a wonderful day